Hello, everybody. Welcome to our all hands meeting. Phones away, laptops down, please, eyes to the front. It's time to start the meeting. Thank you all for coming today. First, let me start the WebEx. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, it started, thank God. Right, well. Hello to everybody in the room here at the monthly sales, all hands, and welcome to those of you on the WebEx. Thank you for joining in. But please, whoever's eating breakfast on the WebEx, can you mute yourself? We don't need that in the room. Thank you. Right, as you know, I'm Andy Cockery, VP of Sales, and I'm here with the best slides and the best information with the monthly sales meeting. We have Sales update, sales targets, new dashboard training, and because I'm amazing at Tableau, I'm going to give you one more Tableau tip. So let's get going. Sales update, great job team. Almost everybody did a really awesome job last month. Here's the sales dashboard. Uh, um, yeah, sorry, it looked bigger on my laptop, but I'm sure you can see anyway. So yeah, right, as you can see, each category of sales, each department did pretty well. In fact, particularly home office. As you can see, home office, well done, guys. You smashed it. Excellent month-on-month -month growth and up year-on-year, -year, clearly, as you can see. Whereas consumer team, what the hell happened, guys? You were awful, terrible month-on-month -month growth in, in your department. We are going to have words with you all later. But generally, good job. Now, it's coming up to 2019. I am sure you are all thinking about what's going to be happening next year. Here is the analysis I've been doing with, with the execs. Let's take a look at the plan. Yeah, sorry, it looked bigger on my laptop, but we'll be all right. Now, as you can see, what I've shown here is uh, sales for each region, 2018 and 2019, and the blue circles are showing percentage growth. And what is very clear on this chart, as you can see, is every region, whatever your size, has huge sales growth targets next year. So go sales team, you are gonna smash it, I am sure. New dashboard training. Yes, we've invested heavily in the dashboard. Um, here's the new version of the dashboard. And yeah, we had to let the training team go. We had to cut that budget. So we wish the training team well in their future endeavors, but it's fine. We can all learn how to use the dashboard very, very clearly. Check out the new KPI. This KPI is the one we've updated, and as you can see, this is now indicating something very important, so use this KPI for basing your guided analytics. We fixed this chart. You told us there were some problems, so as you can see, we fixed this chart now, and that's the one you're gonna be using to paste into reports each month. And we've added this new filter over here too, so make sure you use this filter, because if you set this filter incorrectly, all the numbers are going to be incorrect, and we don't want that. It's this filter. So get those right. We are going to have an awesome time using this dashboard. And finally, you know I love giving you all some Tableau tips because I am so good at Tableau. Here we go. This time, I want to show you how to make a slope chart. Slope charts are great. I've broken out our data into eight categories. You can see there's really good insight here already. But in a slope chart, all we want is the start and end of the data. So we just go bish, bash, bosh, get rid of it, boom. That's a slope chart. You can even change the axis to not include the zero to show the relative range rather than absolute range. There you go. I want to see slope charts from everybody. You can be the boss too. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for attending uh, the meeting today. Everybody is inv invited to the happy hour except the consumer team, you guys need to do some work. And as always, I'll be leading the dance party. Thank you very much, have a good day. <coughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Hello. All right, that, was a, that idea was inspired by uh, Carl Nussbaumer who uh, wrote Storytelling with Data, which is an amazing book I recommend you all buy. Hands up if you've seen those mistakes made. All, all of them, right? Hands up if you've made some of those mistakes. Yeah, yeah, all of them. And hands up if you are so numb to that problem, you didn't even realize that was meant to be funny. <laughs> right. Believe me, the first time I did this dry run, someone was like, well, that's just like every meeting I ever attend. 
I am delighted to be doing this presentation. I'm also delighted to be doing this presentation at the end of this conference, because uh, we've all seen many brilliant presentations. But this is clear and presentation danger, putting charts onto a big screen. I'm Andy Cotgreave, uh, technical evangelist and IronViz host. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for waving the green sticks last night. People did say, could I wear the suit again? But no, nah, that was just for last night. But I want you, I'm good Andy. We're gonna try and talk today about how not to be bad Andy. Uh, I want everybody in this room to leave with some ideas about how to make data stand out on a screen. Before I start, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I'm gonna be writing a series of blog posts about this topic on gravyanecdote.com, that's my blog. So I've started, the first one has been published this morning. Uh, keep checking back, you can subscribe to our newsletter uh, to keep the updates on that. So take notes, take photos, but if you want deeper resources, the blog is gonna develop over the next few months. Follow me on Twitter, a cotgrief. We announced a new feature, export to PowerPoint, right? This is gonna be really cool because a lot, of a lot of people might say, why not just use Tableau? Well, for many of us, the reality is we need to use PowerPoint. That is what our corporations expect and demand. So we're gonna, so that's a new feature. Uh, th there was a session yesterday about the export feature. Obviously that was yesterday, but you'll be able to watch the recording on YouTube at the end of next week when we release all the sessions. Uh, so keep your eye on that feature and give us feedback on how it works because just because you can export to PowerPoint, it doesn't mean you're gonna make readable charts. Uh, I sent a tweet out in April uh, asking what other tips some people have and loads of them responded. So most of those tips are in this uh, session and I'd like to thank everybody who replied. My motivation for this talk has been bubbling around for about 20 years. I've been working for 20 years and I've been seeing, been seeing you know, I've seen charts and data presented for many years. The charts that Bad Andy was showing are actually real charts. I'm rebuilt in Superstore data, but real charts that we have been using in Tableau month after month after month. And talented people stand in front of these charts and say interesting things, but we are just so accustomed to not seeing what's on the chart. And we're all, everybody in this room, we're analysts, right? We're presenting data. This is the last mile of data actually communicating insight. And I think if we let ourselves down with the data that's on our screen, it's a problem we shouldn't accept, and yet we do. Two key concepts. First of all, a big screen. All right, this is a big screen, but is it really? Keynote rooms, meeting rooms, if you're at the back of this room, that is not a big screen. Sometimes you go to keynotes. If you're at the back of the keynote room, actually, it's not really very big because it's a long way away. But also, whether you're a keynote presenter or a session presenter, I'm sure every single one of you at some time plugs a laptop into a meeting room screen. And they might be big TVs, but at the back of the room, they're actually not very big. And it can be very hard for people to see what you're doing. So we all present on big screens, whether you get to stand on a stage like this or just be in a meeting room. Secondly, as I've thought about this, I think we put three types of data on big screens. The first is dashboards, right? We, we all design dashboards. That's what, that's what Tableau's great at doing. And when you put a dashboard on a big screen, you've got to think about how to actually bring people along with it. Secondly, you use charts to persuade and inform and inspire. How can you design charts to actually punch home a message? We'll look at that. And finally, you might be demonstrating Tableau, training Tableau, or just your boss says, let's plug this in and explore some data. There are ways in which you can use Tableau to actually communicate data really effectively. So with those two concepts, we're gonna look at all of those, uh, we're gonna look at each of those types of charts and then uh, do some general tips and a summary. Does that sound good? Excellent, right, wow. Yeah, you're so keen, I love it. So let's do dashboards first. Three things. Dashboards are not designed for a big screen, so we already have a challenge. Secondly, your audience don't know what your dashboard says. You, in fact, who was in the Adam Grant keynote this morning? There were a lot of you there. 
And he talked about this, uh, the clapping, right, when you're singing a tune in your head. This is what presenting dashboards is like. You know what every single pixel on, on that dashboard does, but nobody in, your, in the audience has a clue. It's just a bunch of numbers and charts and lines. So you have to bring them along and explain what's on there. And as you do that, you need to draw attention to each area you want to discuss, which means essentially dashboards is about how to point. And this is what has driven me mad for years. Blah, 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 blah. As you can see, this chart is the one I'm talking about. There's one person in this room who knows what I'm pointing at, and it's the person whose eye goes from here through the finger to the chart I'm pointing at. Nothing wrong with standing behind a lectern, right? You know, this is fine. But if you point and go, yeah, that chart and that one and that one, nobody can see it. And I've, who's seen that happen this week? Right, it's, it, it happens all the time. So we need to work out how to point better. We're going to see Hans Rosling in action in a few minutes, but the, here was a man who was an absolute master. Um, Hans Rosling was a Swedish physician who blew, you know, exploded onto the world stage with an incredible TED talk, and we'll see that in a minute. But I did want to share this wonderful photo from TC13. He travelled with a two and a half metre long pole with an arrow on it, and it was funny and effective, but he could literally point anywhere. I'm not sure it's the best thing for us all, because generally you can't take two and a half meter long sticks on planes. But, so if we can't do that, what solutions can I give to you? So I'm going to give you six ways to point, right? You didn't think you could get that this week, did you? Uh, so, six ways. The first two are if you are at your keyboard. So if you have access to your keyboard while you're presenting, on the Windows, you have to download software on the Mac to do this. You can press the control key. Uh, you can go to the mouse properties, click, uh, show the location of the pointer when you can hit control key. And then every time you hit control, you're going to get this little ring around your mouse cursor to draw attention. Let me draw attention to these numbers and the red dots show the KPIs which, or the categories which are underperforming. The great thing about this is you set it up once, and then that's it. It's permanently set up on your machine. So if you're, if you're doing a presentation you hadn't expected to do, you're absolutely fine. Second thing you can do is zoom in. On Windows, it's Windows key plus plus, uh, Windows key and the plus key. Let me draw attention to the KPI. This one here, 3.4 million, it's got a red dot showing that it's underperforming. That contrasts with the new business opportunity dash, uh, KPI, which has no red dot. That one is performing fine. I'll zoom out and move on. Uh, this is a great way of doing this. You can do this on the Mac too. I highly recommend you practice before you do it in a meeting because the mouse control can create a fair bit of motion sickness. You saw the devs on stage do this brilliantly yesterday. We train them, we train them very, a lot on how to do zooming, but it's very, sorry? Oh, sorry, I thought I heard something. Did somebody say something then? No? Wow, it's the voices in my head. <laughs> that must have been an echo. All right. So there are two things you can do if uh, you're at your machine. But sometimes you are not near the screen and not, yet, not near a machine. So well, how do we get over this problem? Well, you can physically point. Here's bad Andy. I want to draw attention to this KPI, the red dots show the word, why that KPI is underperforming. This is a good thing to do, but it has dangers. First of all, you are often going to obscure the thing you're going to point at. Uh, if you don't have a big voice, you will often do this, and then nobody can hear you because you're pointing this. But also, you might be in a room like this. I cannot physically point at these things, so eh, that's all right. Clickers are excellent ways of doing it. You can use laser pointers. Does anybody like laser pointers? Does anybody think they're a bit cheesy and feel like 90s? Yeah. I just, I just don't like them. And they're also really hard to use, because I could use a laser pointer, but I could only laser point on one of these screens. So if I chose that one, you guys would not see what I'm doing. So I, mm, they're not a great way. But I don't get any money for selling these things. This is the best clicker ever. This is a Logitech Spotlight, and with it, you can do this. Let me draw attention to this KPI, and these are the ones that contribute to the underperforming uh, KPI. This is the chart we changed. You can use that, uh, and so on. It's just a click of a button. Oh, hang on, let me just, uh, it's a click of a button, and 
I just get this ability to draw a spotlight. So if you present a lot, this is a great way of drawing attention to something. Number five is shapes and callouts. And I think this is, a re this is my favorite and easiest and most powerful solution. I want to draw attention to the KPI. We've changed the way that works. The red dot shows it's underperforming. The red dots on the rest of the dashboard indicate which categories are failing. We added this chart. It allows X and Y. And this is the filter we've changed for your central reporting. I'm using arrows and shapes in PowerPoint to draw attention to a particular part of the dashboard. The reason I recommend you use these is because we are poor. We are lacking the amount of time we would like to devote to presentations, right? And we often go into a presentation maybe not having thought of our script quite enough. But if you know you want to show four things on this dashboard, then each one of these callouts becomes your script note prompt. So this is a really nice way of doing things. And you can use Tableau. Tableau has a great feature called Story Points. For this, we'll use the dashboard that Bad Andy was looking at. You can just throw the dashboard into a story point, duplicate it, and then highlight the marks you were talking about. So even though this dashboard wasn't particularly clear, at least Bad Andy could say, OK, uh, Home Office team, I've highlighted October and the previous month and October last year. You can see you've gone, uh, done really well this month, and month-on-month -month growth is really high. Consumer team. What happened? I've highlighted this month and last month nearly 50% drop. Uh, so story points is a really effective way of doing things. And of course, you can um, interact. If somebody asks you a further question, you can interact directly with the data. So that's six, six ways you can point to a dashboard. Because they are not designed for a big screen. The next thing we want to do is talk about persuasive and informative charts. And I'm going to show you a couple of minutes of Hans Rosling's 2006 present, uh, TED talk on uh, stats that reshape your worldview. Uh, so what, as you watch this, notice how he's showing a chart to persuade and inform, but also look at how he points to the data, because it's an absolute, he's, he was a genius. And indeed, right? right? And, I just think this is, a, this is just an inspiration for us all. And so we'll talk about some of the things in the charts he uses afterwards. OK, here we go. So this is what I could display here. I put fertility rate here, number of children per woman, one, two, three, four, up to about eight children per woman. We have very good data since 1962, 1960 about, on the size of families in all countries. The arrow margin is narrow. Here I put life expectancy at birth, from 30 years in some countries up to about 70 years. And 1962, there was really a group of countries here that was industrialized countries, and they had small families and long lives. And these were the developing countries. They had large families, and they had relatively short lives. Now, what has happened since 1962? We want to see the change. Are the students right? It's still two types of countries? Or have these developing countries got small families and they live here or have they got longer lives and live up there let's see we stop the world and this is all UN statistic that has been available here we go can you see there it's China they're moving against better health they're improving there all the green Latin American countries they are moving towards smaller families the yellow ones here are the Arabic countries and they get larger families but they no longer life but not larger families the Africans are the green down here they still remain here this is India Indonesia is moving on pretty fast and in the 80s here you have and Bangladesh still among the African countries there, but now Bangladesh, it's a miracle that happens in the 80s. The imams start to promote family planning, and they move up into that corner, and in 90s, we have the terrible HIV epidemic that takes down the life expectancy of the African countries and all the rest of the world moves up into the corner where we have long lives and small family, and we have a completely new world. <laughs> Amazing, amazing, right? Now, every one of you in this room is capable of doing that. I mean, he went to the nth degree and took inspiration from circus performers and sports commentators. He was an absolute performer. But if you care about communicating your insight to your managers, to your team, to your stakeholders, then try and be a bit like Hans. It's great fun, honestly. I, I highly recommend you do it. 
but he was, he was pointing. You, you, knew, you knew exactly how that chart worked, and then it made a lot of sense, and you saw, learned something about how the world is changing. Um, so, first one, Mark, uh, first tweet that somebody sent me was, keep things simpler than a regular dashboard. Right? Generally, if you're going to persuade people, you need to make a very simple or a chart that the message can get across in about, well, hang on. You need to make something that is simple enough to be understood in the time it's on the screen. Because that's one of the key questions I, had, I thought about when I was developing this talk. In a lot of presentation books I've seen, it's like, well, the data must be understood in just a few seconds. Um, but I don't agree with that. We just saw hands present a complex chart. So I think the rule is something like this. A chart must be understandable in about half the time that it's on the screen. And this allows you to do lots of things. Because, I mean, if you look at a chart like that, is that too complex for a presentation? You probably think it is. But it's actually, that's the scatter plot that Hans just showed you uh, in a two minute clip. Right? So if you're going to show a complex chart, then you need to bring your users along so that they can understand what the chart is showing. You can show complexity, but you have to explain the chart so people understand what you've built. Let's have a look at another example. Um, put your hands up if you've not seen this chart before, if you haven't seen it. All right, so quite a bunch of you. This is arguably one of the best charts ever made. Certainly, that's what Edward Tufty uh, said. I like it so much, I actually made a T-shirt out of this same viz, right? This is, I also have this on my wall in my home office, and I have mugs with this design on it. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, I am that geeky. It's a really complicated chart, and what it shows is the uh, folly of Napoleon's invasion of Russia in 1812. In order to do this justice, it takes about three minutes to explain it because there's five or six different measures, there's all sorts of geography, and it's a really rich data story, which in, in two seconds goes, uh, Napoleon started here, he marched to Russia, he was losing soldiers, he, he marched to Moscow, then he retreated, uh, and he got back to the Russian border at the end of 1812 with, with only 10,000 soldiers left. But the actual story in this chart is much, much deeper. Uh, and if you go to the blog, there's a video of me explaining it in detail, and it is a worthy chart that you could say is one of the best ever. But imagine the conversation in 1812, at the end of 1812, between the Russian military leader, Field Marshal Mikhail Kutsov, and Emperor Alexander I. Uh, and I like to imagine this was on an old Android interface. And Alex says, great job, Mikhail. You got on the scorched earth policy. That was awesome. Cheers, buddy. Do you fancy some vodkas later? Yeah, that would be great. But I'm doing a presentation. We're having a meeting. Would you like to do a summary presentation, a summary PowerPoint to the team about the campaign? Ooh, OK. Uh, how long will I have in the meeting? And Alexander says, well, just five minutes. It's a busy agenda, right? <laughs> Familiar? I, it, it might be how it happened, who knows? So, Mikhail now has a thing. He is asking himself, should I use this chart in the meeting? Well, this chart was drawn in 1879, so it clearly couldn't have been used, but um, if he had the data and the chart, would he use this chart? No, he wouldn't. This is maybe the chart I think he would have used. Hi, Alexander and the team, it's great to see you. We had a great success with the scorched earth policy. We killed 380,000 of the soldiers, we captured 100,000, and only 2% only of the soldiers got out of Russia alive. It was a huge success. Thank you very much. Let's go and have some vodka. Right? That message, that second chart, takes away a huge amount of the data, but he's only got five minutes. And what I see so often is people put their complex dashboards on, which might, they might be amazing, right? They, often they're really good dashboards, but then they go, yeah, as you can see, we're going to be doing really well in 2019 because this is going to happen and that's going to happen, and then they move on. And everybody in the audience is just so, they're going, oh, well, really? Okay, if you say so. Um, and in fact, as, as I was preparing this talk and talking to people about the topic, I found a lot of people didn't really see this 
there's a big problem that needs to be solved. And I'm like, why not? And I think somebody expressed it really well last week that they're just so used to not seeing charts that make sense on screens that they don't see it as a problem. And that's driven me crazy for two years. So, chart must be understandable in about half the time it's on the screen. Now you know that, how can we make short, punchy charts to get a message across very, very quickly? Uh, well, here's another case study. If anybody was at the London uh, conference last year, when we the Tableau conference in London, we showed a slide about PATH, uh, an organization trying to eradicate malaria in Zambia by 2021. And there were two key messages, but mostly it was about the percentage reduction in malaria cases since using Tableau and data to tackle the problem. Here's the data. It's a great chart, right? Now, you, you can see there's a big reduction and then some seasonal peaks. You can pretty this up to make it a bit more impactful in a slide. But as they were designing the slide, they thought, well, what is the key message? And the key message was this 93%. So this is how the slide looked like in the keynote. The big text annotation hits you in the face. So as James Eilawar was telling this message, this is what he said, so everybody sees that, and then as he's talking, you can just cast your eye over the contextual secondary information that's given there just to sort of validate the key message about 93% reduction. The other thing that is on that 93% is essentially, if you're gonna punch home a message, make sure the fonts are big enough. Uh, as I've gotten older, I mean, you wouldn't believe I'm now 46, I'm sure, but yes, I'm 46. Uh, yeah. No, you all do think I'm 46, great. <laughs> uh, but I have realized that my eyes are getting worse, right? And it is, I sit at the front because I can't read fonts from the back. Mark Kernkey from Groupon, a uh, great Tableau customer and ambassador. If you're building slides on a laptop, the best way to test this is to just stand three meters back from the laptop and read your slides from here. And if you can't read them, then your audience can't either. This is the default PowerPoint title font that we've been using for the TC18 uh, slide deck. This is the text in the bullets. Can anybody not read this at the back? Uh, so it is big enough. I was interested to see if this is even, because I think that's even too small. But you'd never make a PowerPoint with smaller fonts than this, would you? Would you? Would you? No, yeah, some of you might. But you know you shouldn't. And what I see all the time is somebody trying to communicate insight and they just go copy paste from a chart that works in Tableau and they assume that you can read the thing I need you to read. Oh, consumer sales are going up. I can't read it, I can't read it. And we, we let our audience down when we, make, when we do these things. So how do you fix the problem? Well, the answer isn't just to make fonts big because then everything's too big and you're actually clouding out the data. So you need to consider which bits the audience, well, which bits you want the audience to be able to see. You know, maybe this is an example. If my message is about consumer sales growth, then I'm just gonna label those things and you know, not make the X and Y axis big, I'm just gonna label the categories. Let's have a look at what we did when we had started addressing these dashboards the bad Andy was doing and uh, trying to rebuild them. So this dashboard is based on a dashboard that we use internally in Tableau to track lead generation. Uh, now as you can see, the dashboard has been in existence for many times because it is still sort of Tableau version four formatting. So we need to address that. And it's, a f it's fine in dashboard if when we go to Tableau server and look at our own internal server, it's okay, you can read the information. But when I sat down with the people presenting this and we started trying to think, how can we redesign this? We thought, how can we punch home a message? And I asked the person presenting, it's like, what are you trying to communicate every month when you show this? Because this is shown to the marketing team every single month. And they said, well, I want to show for each of the three categories of leads, or in, the, in this case, uh, home office and consumer stuff, how did we do this month? How did that compare to last month? And how did it compare to the same month last year? That was the requirement, because that's what we say every month. But importantly, we also wanted the teams, each of the three different teams, to be able to see their own data as uh, maybe one bit was being pointed out. So we did a makeover. Um, and what I found is when I show the makeover, when we show the makeover that we did with our real 
genuine data that we care about because we're trying to generate leads in Tableau, it really it was like, wow, that's great. I found that the Superstore change is a bit less, less impactful because we're not really the Superstore team. But this is what we did. Imagine you're in the corporate sales, and I'm going to talk about consumer. You guys did uh, this this month. You were 2% up, 38% month on month. Corporate team, you're down 6.1%. I am sure you all have differing opinions on the success or failure of this. Hopefully you're seeing that at least every one of you in the room can go to your department, see what happened this month, and very quickly see if you were up or down month on month, year on year. I don't think this is perfect. Uh, we're still getting feedback on what we can improve, but we do think it's better than the previous version. This next one was another uh, marketing dashboard where we were talking about uh, targets for 2019. And the chart is understandable if you look at it for about two minutes and read the axes. But the person doing this presentation only put the slide on the screen, or only put the chart on a slide for about uh, 30 seconds, and was trying to convey the point of sales growth very, very quickly. So we can ask a question. What would you change to make this a better chart for the purpose at hand? Well, the first answer, and something that one of the things that is really easy to fix, is make the chart fill the screen. Right? There's no reason to waste white space. Nobody wants to see that PowerPoint template. It's not, it's not even a nice PowerPoint template, is it? Right? Fill the screen. So even if you don't change the chart, you at least give more people in the room a chance to read the information you're giving to them. And here's what we tried to do uh, as we, we looked at this chart. Uh, so what did we do? Let's just go back. So we've got a bunch of stuff. You know, you're probably thinking about what you might change uh, to make this a little bit better. I thought, well, I'll take just one measure. The, blo the blue circles are percentage growth. The orange, that was, that was the actual sales value. Uh, so I was like, I just want to punch home a message about percentage growth, because that was the point of the, the slide. Bars, not circles, sort these and then rotate them. Now, once you've rotated your chart, that means this unreadable, tiny little blur on the left-hand side, you can make the fonts bigger so that people can begin to read these. And I still think I should probably have made these bigger for people at the back. Now, get rid of clutter. Uh, you don't need headers. You probably don't even need the axis since the bars are labeled. Then. I don't think anyone in this room really cares that it's 77.23%. You know, you might need that in, uh, if you're like the financial officer, but simplify these numbers to, uh, to get the message across, look, to make it easier to see the number. Uh, don't get rid of great grid lines. Try and reduce the noise and focus on the data. And here's one that uh, I've argued with with colleagues about quite a lot. And again, you, you might have your own opinions here. What is this chart showing? I have no idea. Now, I'm going to tell you what the chart shows in the presentation, but I think you should always add a title. Uh, here's one. This year, all regions have 20% growth targets. The reason being is everybody in an audience, attention will wane, right? You know, we are distracted by things all the time. So if I'm talking about something and you've drifted off, when you come back, at least the title is there explaining what the chart shows. And make sure that title is short and tells everybody what the message is. Then I added a reference line, and then I made the percentages even bigger. So this was my first attempt at making over this chart. And when I did my dry run, so many people were like, well, what is the sales value? Percentage of what? How many were thinking that? Like you're thinking, percentage of what? What's the actual right? right. So I did this version to add the sales value. Uh, and I tried loads of versions. I tried color on the bars, but it just didn't kind of work. And yes, I have encoded data using circles, which is not great practice, right? It's not best practice according to the data viz uh, police. But yeah, you, you, you've, you've, ha you've all been told off by them, right? But here's the point. I'm trying to take, give you a message about growth targets for next year. So the blue represents the growth targets. I've encoded that in an accurate or an easy to perceive measure. 
You know, we can, and we can understand length very, very accurately. So that's the primary purpose of this slide. The secondary purpose is so you can see percentage of what. And for that, circles, we can get the gist of the value from the circles, but not the exact value. So when I'm presenting this chart and I'm in charge of the message, it's about percentage growth. Now, if you're in sales, you might want the actual values, but these are the decisions you have to think about as you're designing these uh, charts. So we went from the left to the right, and again, hopefully, you think that was an improvement. You've probably got ideas about what you do differently yourself. Uh, one thing that was on there was an idea from Fee Gordon. Uh, so she said, use color in the title to encode a color legend. And that's, I mean, that's pretty good, good advice in many situations. So sales volume is in orange. That means I don't have to label the circles. And the 20% growth target is in blue, and that rep represents here. I mean, that's, that's just good practice in uh, general dashboard design, but it helps understand this chart. And if you want to particularly highlight a Sweden, like for example, you can then use highlights to draw into it. Okay, that's that. Now, demoing Tableau. We've seen lots of people demoing Tableau this week. We spent a lot of effort in Tableau internally trying to get people uh, to do this right. Um, generally, your demo workbook shouldn't be your production workbook because they perform different tasks. And we're going to see some of the changes I make whenever I demo a Tableau, whenever I demo Tableau in a moment. So what mistakes was Bad Andy making here? Anybody want to shout out? What was he doing wrong? Overlapping labels, yeah. Not full screen, no, there's not much space for the data. No title. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, could anybody follow this? No, it's, it was just all too fast. So I trained bad Andy, and I said, you can do a better job than Let that. Let me show you how to build a slope chart. Let's this is a chart do. that's very useful for focusing on the start and end of a time series only. I've got data from the London cycle hire scheme, and I've got data for a year, uh, 2017, and I've broken out the information for eight of the docking stations. Uh, this red line, for example, is Albert Gate. Now, with a slope chart, you're only interested in the start and end of the data set. So I'm going to select those. Now, I'm using the control key to select multiple data points. And once we get those data points selected, the command button appears. And what we're interested in here is keeping only the start and end of the data set. So we'll press the button. And what we have is a slope chart revealing things that were hidden in the original version of the chart with all the data. So it's just a case of keeping the start and end of the data set only. Something else we can do is choose whether to include or exclude zero on the y-axis. Well, to do that, we right-click on the we right-click on the axis itself and choose the right feature from the context menu. In that case, it's the edit axis option. And here we have uh, many features, but the one we want to choose is to not include zero. I'm going to untick that. Let's uh, zoom back out. And now you can see the data covers the entire uh, screen, uh, accentuating the range of data or the relative change in data rather than the absolute data. And that's how to do a slope chart and not include zero on an axis. Did he do a better job? Mm -hmm. Did he not do a better job? He did a better job, good, right. Let's just look at the kind of things he changed. Uh, make as much space for the data as you can. So hide your taskbars, try and get Tableau as full screen as you can. Um, in this case, I minimized the data window. I knew that I wasn't gonna add any more dimensions or measures to this, so I hid it so there was more space for the data. I made selected fonts bigger. Uh, I kept the y-axis small because it's not really relevant in a demo what the y-axis is, but I did make the x-axis bigger because I wanted to convey that, I wanted people to be able to read 
the time axis or the x-axis along the bottom to sort of understand the time span of my data set. The title, like we said on the previous examples, the title tells you what I'm going to show. So again, if attention wanes and you come back in, you know, your attention comes back to this after I've already started the demo, at least you can see that as a hook to think, oh, what is Andy actually showing me? Oh, yeah, a slope chart. Tooltips. Make the default tooltips massive when you are demoing Tableau. We've seen it all so many times. People are going, as you can see, this tooltip. And I'm like, I can't see an eight-point tooltip. I mean, I can if I'm here. If I'm here on my laptop, eight points is great. But 28 points is really good for a demo. And a 28-point font tooltip looks ridiculous on a laptop screen. So you've got to escape that uh, perception of how it looks on your laptop screen and think, how's it going to look on this one? on these big ones. Also, don't move your mouse. Um, I think a, a sort of a nervous twitch is we, we, we move our mouse everywhere and tooltips are appearing and disappearing and it's really, really hard to follow. Last year, we did a cinema tour across Europe and we took Tableau and we did events in cinemas. And Constantine did most of those demos and they really discovered this. You know, when you've got a massive, sort of almost IMAX size or 70, you know, huge cinema screen, that mouse movement is really hard to follow. So just move your mouse to one of the marks, let the tooltip show, and then take your hand off the mouse. The, the less you move the mouse, the better for your audience. Another thing is to linger on context menus. When you're using Tableau, you're just going to go right click, press, and move on. But if you're showing somebody how to use Tableau, they need to see what the context menu option you choose is. So you right click, you go right click on the axis, I'm going to choose edit axis, and then click it. Also, don't use keyboard shortcuts when you're demonstrating Tableau because nobody can see you press Control V, Control Z, Control X, Control Y, but they can see you press the toolbars or the context menus. And finally, we saw it earlier with showing dashboards. Make good use of Zoom because dash uh, dialog boxes are not designed for big screens. They're very hard to see what's going on. So zoom in and zoom out. And that's uh, how to do some demos. Right, now, the final sort of section before I start summarizing is general tips. And an acknowledgement that most of you probably know all of this. Uh, but we are poor, of, we are time poor, right? We don't have the time to do all these things. Now, I would say make the time, but I know that's not always realistic. So if you are short of time, uh, I've just got a couple of tips to at least make things a little bit better. First of all, I mentioned it before, fill the slide. Don't use white space. If you copy and paste and it doesn't fill PowerPoint, make it fill PowerPoint. Because even if the chart isn't ideal, at least people will be able to see it and maybe get some insight from it. One thing you can do to help make this a lot easier is to build dashboards that are 1600 by 900, right? So if you're gonna put this chart into PowerPoint, create a dashboard that's 16 by nine, drop your chart into it, and copy paste, and that'll paste straight back in to a PowerPoint slide. And not only are we doing export to PowerPoint, you might find in a release at some point in the future that PowerPoint slide is gonna be added as an option for one of these fixed sizes. Uh, and it'll be 169, which is just a, a sort of a really nice ratio that it fits on, you know, so you can still edit the dashboard. It still fits in most laptop screens, uh, and it scales the fonts up quite nicely. So you can just choose PowerPoint slide, drop the chart in, copy paste that into PowerPoint, and uh, that'll be really successful. And there's one last thing that drives me crazy that I think was the thing that really inspired this talk. Uh, what is going on in this slide that drives me nuts? Sorry? It's not transparent. Uh, yeah, something, about, something like that. Anyone else? Yeah, can see the outline, yeah. It's a double title, yes, actually, there are two titles on this. That wasn't it, that was actually me making a mistake and designing a bad slide. <laughs> if your PowerPoint template has stuff along the bottom, 
If you paste your chart over that, I'm going to say it, to me, to me, it just looks sloppy and lazy. Uh, clear the background data away so you don't just, so to make that chart stand out and make me happy. It's really easy to do this. You right click on the background of the slide or select a whole bunch of slides. You choose format background and you hide the background graphics and they're gone. Now PowerPoint corporate designs are great, but don't paste an image over them. So that's angry Andy and that's happy Andy, right? It's just, you are, your goal when you're putting data on a screen is to communicate effectively. What we are doing, we have like stacks of data, technology stacks, we collect it, we store it, we clean it, we prep it, we analyze it, and then we tell somebody the decisions we want them to make, and we make them look really weak. It's the, this is the last mile of data, and just do everything you can to get these things right. And this is, ah, this makes me, I see this all the time internally, drives me mad. Everyone's really scared when I'm in an audience now in a Tableau presentation. They're like, oh, Jesus, what did I do? All right, so there's two, two or three quick tips for when you're short of time. I'll summarize. Um, will I summarize first? Yeah, I'll summarize first. Actually, no, before I do the summary, does anybody have any questions or comments? We'll do that now. Does anybody have any, put your hands up. No questions or comments. Oh yeah, you've got one, yeah. What if they want you to modify the dashboard while you're in the presentation? That is a really good question. There are, well, first of all, do the presentation in Tableau story points. That's something you can do. So you could, then, then you're interactive, you're in there. The reality is a lot of people have to go to PowerPoint. Uh, there are some extensions you can download for PowerPoint, which allow you to embed a Tableau dashboard in there. Um, so go check those out. I'll be sharing those on the blog. Uh, we've written a, written a couple of those. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of one of the existential challenges. It's like they want it to go into PowerPoint, but then they ask questions of the data, and you're like, well, you wanted PowerPoint. But you can embed it. You can embed a live view in there. All right, but you need Tableau Server for that. Any others? Best practices for where to place the key to a table. Um, I would say, what would I say to that? Well, I'd say, right, somewhere that you draw attention to it. So, because when you're in a presentation, right, if, if I put it down here, people are probably not going to look there in the bottom right. If I put it up here, they'll probably see it. But if I really want them to notice it, then I have to, wherever I put it, I say, look, here's the table. Uh, this, uh, this explains what you're seeing uh, when you're looking at the table. But I'm not sure I'd put many tables on a presentation slide. Uh, so it, it, certainly if I did, there'd just be a few numbers. All right, thank you. Any more? No? All right. Okay, in which case I'm going to wrap up. Um, first of all, Gravy Anecdote is uh, where you can find it. I'll be blogging about a lot of these tips. Um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, secondly, could everybody raise their hand? Everybody's hand in the air. If you've seen me present before, you know what this is going to be. Right, keep, keep them up. Uh, if you're going to fill the session survey, please put your hand down. Ah, some, some naysayers, right. Uh, so, honestly, a plea from every single speaker. Uh, we, you know, I, I put a lot of time and effort into these presentations. I dry run them and then I'm really excited to do them at conference. But I want to know what works and what doesn't. And every pres presenter is exactly the same. So please, if everybody could fill out the session surveys. I think there's been a bit of a struggle on the app, but we're certainly going to send eval surveys uh, out on email. So I'd highly, I mean, I'd love feedback from every single one of you in the room. But to summarize, all of us, put data on big screens. As soon as we go into a meeting room and plug our laptop into a machine, we are on a big screen environment. Sometimes we're showing dashboards, in which case you have to draw attention to the right part of the screen at the right moment. Sometimes we're doing persuasive charts that inform and inspire. For that, we need to punch home the message and consider how to get the intent across in half the time that's going to be on the screen. 
You can show complex charts, but you don't have to. And when you're demoing Tableau, think about the user, make the fonts bigger, and just slow the mouse down. And as I sort of just iterated, you know, the whole point of this is, this is the last mile of data. You've invested in Tableau, you've invested in data prep tools. Do ev everybody do themselves a favor and make sure that the message that you put in those presentations to stakeholders gets across and decisions get made because they can understand and see your data. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much and I'll take some more questions at the podium. Thank you.